Listen up, brunch Twitter, because this one's for you. I get it. The last four years have felt basically like drowning. Your every waking moment has been haunted by the threat of Trump's next awful tweet, whether it's plunging us into World War III or just getting people to drink bleach. But now, Biden is the winner of the 2020 election, and you just can't wait to relax and get back to the way things were. But I have news for you. In the words of AOC, we can't go back to brunch. We still live in a country where 70 million Americans voted for Trump, even after everything he did. Joe Biden's America is not guaranteed to be a safer place for people of color, immigrants, LGBTQ folks, the unhoused, and countless others. Just like how this country wasn't a safe place for many in the Obama administration as well. Now that the Biden-Harris administration is in power, it is our duty to hold them as accountable as we held Trump. Voting is not enough and never has been enough. Trump was never the final enemy. All of those long-standing problems, the Electoral College, voter suppression, misinformation, foreign interference, are still going to be there after he leaves office. If you're already feeling paralyzed and exhausted by all of this, though, I get it. But there is hope. Outrage over Trump has led to incredible grassroots movements, all of which are combating a lot of these crucial issues and even helped Biden eke out a victory. More and more everyday people outside of the establishment of politics are getting involved in our government and they're winning. I know we're all tired, but we need to keep caring about politics this much because when we do, we make our government more grounded in the day-to-day -day problems of everyday citizens. At the end of the day, we just can't risk going back to sleep. Not when we know what it's like to live through a nightmare. Here's some advice for how you can continue to care about politics this much without losing your damn mind. One, truly appreciate your victories. In 2020, voters elected the first black congresswoman to ever represent Missouri, and the first trans state senator, and the first two openly queer black congressmen. That's huge, historic, and there were also tons of amazing local measures that passed as well. California restored the voting rights to millions of formerly incarcerated citizens. The legalization of weed passed in five states, and in Oregon, they decriminalized all drugs. Two, put your skills to use for the upcoming Senate runoff races. All the progressive policies Biden ran on, like raising minimum wage, combating climate change, LGBTQ rights, gun control, income inequality, and substantial COVID relief, all will be dead in the water if we lose the Senate. Whatever your skills are, you can channel them for political causes. Three, get involved with local political groups. Join community organizers who are dedicated to making your neighborhood a better place for everybody to live in, like your nearest Black Lives Matter chapter. You can also look into community fridges, co-ops, gardens, and mutual aid groups that you can get involved with. Four, when you need to just unplug and veg out, support content creators who are politically active. Watch Twitch streamers that raise money for great causes, or TikTokers who spread political awareness. Five, reach out to loved ones who have fallen victim to conspiracy theories and misinformation. It's a hard but ultimately really rewarding way to reach your hand out. Six, stop doom scrolling. You don't need to be endlessly scrolling on Twitter in order to stay politically active. Instead, sign up for newsletters from your favorite activists and organizations and listen to podcasts that keep you up to date on all of the important information. Instead of fantasizing a world where you can go back to brunch and safely leave politics up to the politicians, imagine caring this much about your government because it makes you proud instead of angry. Now isn't that a nice fantasy?